joining us online. We want to welcome you to our service. It's great to have you joining us and, and to everybody here, welcome again. You know, I love that video because many times God puts a call on our hearts and you just go, really? <laughs> like, really, God? Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, if you, if you pray and you ask God, hey, why am I here on this planet? Why did you put me here? What is it that I'm supposed to do? And that doesn't necessarily mean your job, right? And you finally understand or you're starting to get that message. Sometimes it's overwhelming. Like, really, God? I was a business guy for, I had a 25-year career in business. And then I went, oh, <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> I'm supposed to be a pastor. Really, God? Now, how am I going to do that? And sometimes he does put something on your heart that just seems so big. And, and then, I, you know, I think about it and it, it's overwhelming. I mean, I can't even stick to my New Year's Eve goals. I'm still not eating better. I told myself I was going to do that, but it's not happening. And do you know that this week is the official week of the year that people give up their New Year's Eve resolutions? This is the official week. They went, nope, it was a good try, but I'm not going to do that anymore. And if you're going to the gyms, right, if you've been in the gym, you were there January 1st on that treadmill, oh yeah, we're doing it. Go back Monday and you see how many people are in that gym now, right? It's the official week where people go, I'm done with that one. I mean, if you haven't noticed, in 2021, lots of things just went nuts for all of us. Everything was impacted, right? Your, your personal life, you couldn't get together with your friends, your family, your loved ones. Some people are still, they, they, you know, they haven't seen grandma in I don't know how long because it just hasn't been safe. And your professional life, man, I mean, how many people, like, did their professional lives change? Every single hand has is, is got to go up, right? One way or another, whatever your career is, it changed. Whether it's just your four, yours didn't? What? Oh, we got to talk afterwards. Really? That's interesting. But somehow you were impacted in your professional life. Your financial life, your school life. I mean, if you, were, if you were a student, they said, well, come to school and now put on a mask. Nope, nope, now go back home. Okay, now come back to school. Okay, now go back home, but we're going to give you a computer this time. Nope, now go back home, wear the mask and the computer. Nope, bring our computer back. And now, okay, now go back into school. My little girl is now back in school for, I think, the third time. And this time it's without masks, but some people have masks, but they have to put stuff on their hands in some classes, but others they don't. Makes perfect sense. I mean, we even had to. This is how, how much things change. This is craziness. Are you ready? We even had to reschedule wine study and Bible tasting. I mean, you know things are desperate. That's a group that have officially 1,800 people in it online. Thank you. And we had to reschedule it. You know it's, it's desperate. What about your spiritual life? What's happened to your spiritual life? I mean, God has, in essence, locked us in a room and said, there's your Bible. Read it. What's happened to your spiritual life? Well, we close the chapter 2021, we're in chapter 2022, and the neat part is that the Bible tells us exactly what we got to do. It says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past in Isaiah. The sermon title today is Face to Face, Receive His Grace. And so I want to share with you three ways for you to get the new things that God wants you to do in 2022, for you to secure the stuff that God wants you to do with your life. Wouldn't you like to know that? Then let's pray about it. Father God, we thank you for this worship service. And we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts is pleasing to you, 
O Father, our rock and our redeemer. And Father, we pray that all of your messages here, whether spoken or unspoken, are experienced by everyone. So now speak in and through me, Lord. May these be your words for your will. In Christ's name we pray, and all of God's children say, Amen. Well, so the Bible scripture reads, Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. Oh, isn't that wonderful when pastors tell you to do that? So easy, right? Just forget everything. No problem. Forget anything that's happened in your life that's been detrimental, anything that holds you down, anything like that, and just kind of don't dwell on that, move on to the future. Well, it does kind of make sense, right? You wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be on this broadcast. You would not be the person you are today had it not been for those experiences you had in the past. Good, bad, ugly, and great all of them. And realize that when Isaiah writes this, it seems so, oh yeah, well that'll be easy. But he's writing this to the children of Israel in a really, really tough time in their history. So picture this. They're in captivity. They have lost everything they thought they would keep forever. They're homesick for their land. They want their land back. And God has been promising them this land and this blessing, and they, they're going, hey, God, it's about time that we get this stuff back. They are sad. They are frustrated. They are ready for God to move. Who's ready for God to move in their lives? <laughs> right? Patience. In 2021, we kissed many things goodbye. Last night... We had an amazing celebration of life for one of the founding members of this church. The place was standing room only, Stuart Rosenfeld. We kissed him goodbye for the time being because we're saved. We know we'll see him again in paradise. We said goodbye to some others, to, to Ron Iden, a, a long time member of this church. God called him home too. Both of those just blew all of our minds. I wouldn't have even thought. I mean, there were a lot of things in our lives, in your lives, that you had to say goodbye to. 2022 in our lives will never, ever be the same. Ever. And when you think about that, that's not devastating news because your life will never be the same tomorrow as it is today. So it's not such devastating news. But it brings you into a, a new light, a new perspective of, of how you interact with God. And the great news is God's got something new that he wants you to do in 2022. And I made that rhyme myself. <laughs> Woohoo! So think about it. What do you want to do with your life right now? What do you want to do? Forget the material stuff. Forget that. Spiritually, in your life, heart, and soul. I mean, I, I say all the time, stop working on your bank account. Start working on your soul. What do you want God to do in your life right now? Is there a person or people that you should focus on in 2022? I got some people I got cut off just for my own sanity. Is there a specific location or time or place maybe that you have in your head? You go, you know, we've, I don't know, we've always wanted to vacation in the Holy Land. Maybe it's time to put that on the calendar. It may take you six years to get there, but maybe it's time to put, put that on the calendar and, and at least have a trajectory that, that gets you there. Do you see possibilities in your life or do you see problems when you wake up in the morning? Are you living on yesterday's faith? Well, God's got some new things. And I want to talk to you about three ways to get those things. 
So what's the best way to figure that out? Open the Bible. <laughs> Don't listen to this guy. In 2 Corinthians 3, it says, Since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Not like Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, the same veil remains unlifted because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled faces, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And so Paul is writing this to the Jews, right? The Jews of his day. And, and Paul was kind of a uh, super Jew of the time, right? And then he has this conversion experience. He goes from Saul to Paul. And he realizes that Jesus is the Messiah. And prior to that happening, he's persecuting Christians. He's dragging them out. He's, you know, ordering them to be, oh, I don't know, stoned to death. And you think you got sins again, but before Christ. This is the apostle. But you kind of think he writes this, and then why are the Jews not listening? Why, why are the Jews still ref, reflecting and, and rejecting this? Because Paul knows that he can write this. They will read it, and because it has nothing to do with him. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with the Holy Spirit. So Paul can plant the seed of the Holy Spirit and then step back and let the Holy Spirit do his work. That the Holy Spirit is pouring into the people a change in their heart, a transformation. And so when we look at three ways to embrace the Spirit and the new things that God wants us to do, we can see our life through transformed lenses, through the lenses of the Holy Spirit. And if you're seeing your life through the lenses of the Holy Spirit, guess what? We can position our lives to receive grace. So guess how you, see, you receive grace? I love to give you things that you can remember. You're going to remember today. You ready? You know what today is all about? The F word. Today is all about the F word. Now, I don't know what you're thinking, but I'm thinking focus. Today is all about focus. When we talk about changing our focus, right? Forgetting the former things. Don't dwell on the past. If you're continually looking behind you, you can't see where you're going. I got a new bike. I'm so excited. It's one of those hybrid, you know, things. And so I can get the, the help when I start to pedal. That thing's fast. And I've never ridden one of these things. And I realize that when I go like this, I keep going that way. And you know what's that way? Poles and light posts and curbs and stuff. And I keep, because I'm not a big bike rider, I keep looking behind, make sure like a car's not coming or I don't know, I hear something, you know, and I do one of these and I, you know, whoa, and there's a pole. If you're looking behind you, it's very probable that you're going to impact something in front of you. My wife makes me wear a helmet now. And the Israelites know this. I mean, they had the experience of this, right? They, they had all these past victories, and they thought, hey, that was wonderful, but you can't depend on your past victories. Right? They had many victories in the past. And you know these guys, by the way, right? You see the guy, you know, that you, that you haven't seen in like 20 years, 
and he's wearing that letter jacket from high school because he was that quarterback that threw that pass. And then you see him and you're like, dude, you're 48. Happened when you were 18. Get over it. Right? But they're, they're living on those past victories. And so the Israelites had things like that, leaving Egypt, conquering the land of, of Canaan, fighting off prospective conquerors. They survived a, a split in their country. But right now when they're getting this word, oh, forget all that, they're in captivity. Like, really? God, now you're going to tell me this? All of their previous victories aren't going to set them free. They need a new work, a new miracle, and a new victory. The question isn't, what has God done in your life? The question must be, what is God doing in your life right now? Who are you right now? I'm a different guy than I was yesterday. And what is it that you want him to do in your life? And, and second, in order to move on to the new things in Christ, you have to know that your past failures can't possess you. Right? They can't possess you. And there's so many people out there, you know, you, you have these issues, and then you think every time you meet someone new that they know all your past failures. And you're, oh, you're the guy that, you know... I don't know, ran that red light the other day. They don't know that. And you got to live through that. You, ha you have to repent for that. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. And move on. And he's changed you for that. Not dwell on that. And the children of Israel had failed miserably. Every time God blessed the children of Israel, guess what they did? They're human. <laughs> right? And every time, you know, uh, my father used to say, I give you an inch and you take a mile. Right? And it's so true. God gave them a temple. And so what do the Israelites do? They start worshiping idols. Come on. God gave them the truth. They start proclaiming a lie. God gave them his commands. Can you imagine God's going, all right, I'll just, I'll write it down on stone tablets for them. And they lived like they're just suggestions. God gave them wealth. They used it to abuse the poor. Surprise, surprise. God gave them himself, let me send Jesus, and they gave them nothing but rejection. I mean, they didn't deserve to receive anything more from God. I mean, it's a good thing that God is God. Because I think any one of us would go, look, I'd give, <laughs> give, 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 and you just turn it and throw it back in my face. Yet he still loved them, and he earnestly wanted to help them change. And notice God's message here. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See the next sentence. I am doing a new thing. The beauty of God is when we admit our sins, when we recognize our sins to him, to him. Then we receive forgiveness for those sins, and we can move on. And if you feel like you need to tell those sins to someone, pick somebody. I'll listen to them. I'm no closer to God than any of you. And neither is a priest, by the way. But after you tell me yours, I'm going to tell you mine. <laughs> so get ready for an earful. Right? We can't live on yesterday's faith. Our, our, our first F word is focus. It's change your focus, quit looking at the past. And then the second F word is to clarify your focus. Clarify it. Get it straight. Discover what God wants for you. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. He's doing a new thing. And God says, now it springs up. I'm making a way, now listen to this one, in the desert and streams in the wasteland. So what do you see when you view your life? Do you see possibilities or problems? Notice what God said. I am making a way, a way in the desert. Anyone ever been in a desert? 
I went to school in Tucson. There's a lot of sand and dirt and hotness out there. And if you've ever been in the Sahara, it goes forever away in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Right? So the children of Israel, just like us, had a choice. They could view their past and the, and the problems they present, or they could focus upon what God wanted them to do in their lives. They could choose the way in the desert, or they could choose the desert because of pride and envy and all those other things that eat us up inside. They could choose streams of living water. Or they could choose a wasteland. And it's funny because we will go the desert and the wasteland side just because, I don't know, pride and prejudice and power and fame and money. and I mean, just it's crazy what we will do in the human condition. And in order to discover what God wants you to do, you got to first see yourself as God sees yourself. I mean, if someone were to ask God, hey, what's, what's Marcos all about? I would hope he would say, uh, he's a disciple of Jesus Christ. Next. What would he say about you? You got to see yourself as God sees yourself. You, you got to feel like your past has made your, your life possibly a wasteland. But God in his infinite wisdom and infinite love for you, turns it into a stream. In Romans 8, it says, Therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Yep, no matter how bad we are, or how good we are, or how good you think you're, you are. <laughs> Here's one to think about, how humble you think you are. Oh. Because the moment you think you're humble, you're not being humble. Just want to make sure you're listening. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. And then in Colossians, he says, And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he is reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. God will take your life if you let him. He loves you enough to give you free will. He will take your life even if you see it as, as dried up, useless, and he will transform it into a life of purpose and grace. So we got two F words right now. They're both focused. The first one is change your focus. And the second one is clarify your focus. And our third F word, focus, is focus on your commitment to God. That's a tough one. To God's plan for your life. You know who you are. And if you don't, do something crazy. Turn your phone off for five minutes. Close your eyes and say, God, I'm listening. And then be quiet. And just listen. Focus on your commitment. God's already set into motion. This is what's so cool about God. He's already set into motion a plan for your life. Even the events for the people of Israel to get them out of captivity, back to receive that blessing. But it was still up to them to decide that they wanted to receive that blessing and receive God's offering. And if they refused God's plan, and if they refused following God and leading God, then they were going to suffer more. The Bible says, and I am doing a new thing. Yes, Lord, do a new thing in our life. Do a new thing in our church. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. 
for he is our God. We are his people in his pasture and the sheep of his hand. So today, are you willing to listen to God? The F word, focus. Are you willing to focus on God? And how you do that is by praying, speaking to God. And part of prayer is listening. It's not just a list of, boy, I need this. Then it's listening to God. And where the F word comes in, it's focusing. Pray, listen, and, and obey. He calls us for obedience. A, a new vision, a new interest in the things of God in your life. Imagine what that would be. I pray for many of you, the F word has now taken on a whole new meaning in your life. Focus. Change your focus. Look ahead. Clarify your focus. Discover what God wants for you and focus on the commitment to God's plan. When God does something new in your life, it is transformational. Let's pray. Father God, just as Isaiah wrote to the children of Israel during a bleak period, some of us are coming back from pretty hard periods of our life, from bleak periods. Some of us are counting those periods of joy, and all of us want to grow closer to your love. Lord, we pray for those who had difficult and continue to have difficult emotional, financial, physical, spiritual challenges in 2021. And now in 2022, Father, as we enter into this new season of change, a new horizon for us, we ask for your grace on our lives and the lives of those who need you most. Father, Father we ask you for the ability to apply the F word to our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and worship.